The following is a presentation of TFNN. I am having technical difficulties out the yin yang, and I don't know where yin and yang is, but it's certainly not easy when you're when we let the world go by and not learn computers. Anyway, uh, the first chart that I posted in here is the Dow Jones Transportations. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do was to go through this and show you that. You know, I can't find any higher targets. That doesn't mean it can't go any higher, but uh, that's gone as far as I can measure it on any scale that I have. I've done the same thing uh, with the Dow Jones. I listened to uh, Basil's show, and I, I know that if the uh, Dow gets above 16,780 or whatever that number was, we're probably going to go higher. Uh, we've already made a new high in the uh, S&P for today. Uh, we haven't quite done it yet, the New York Stock Exchange Index, but we're very, very close. Uh, I, I really think Basil had the nail on the head here. It's the volatility index that is going to be the surprise. Uh, I plan, in fact, we're already, we bought some the other day, and we're buying a little bit more today. Uh, we have Mario Draghi tomorrow. He's uh, going to save the world. And um, I got some inside information on this. Uh, basically, what they're going to do is they're going to give everybody uh, interest-free loans and everything they want, plus they're going to pay the loans off for you. So it's a really good deal. All we have to do is just be patient till the uh, announcement comes out tomorrow, and then all of our bills will be paid. They're going to do it for all of Europe, too. So I, don't, I think they're going to not do it for Japan and Asia, but they're going to do it for all of them, the Americas, North and South America, and then also for all of Europe, uh, not counting the Ukraine and Russia. They've, they've been left out of it, my inside information tells me. So there'll be some type of a blockbuster recommendation. Uh, you don't have to sign up for this. This is going to be automatic. Anybody the, over the age of three, uh, one, one and two-year-olds are not involved, but uh, three-year-olds will be included, everybody uh, up to the age of 106. If you're over 106, uh, you don't get it. So we'll see what happens with it. Folks, we're awash in, we're awash in free money. Uh, history tells us it's going to end badly. I think that the uh, key is probably what Basil talked about, and that is the, uh, the, the VIX index. There is absolutely zero fear in the market, folks. I, I haven't seen it this bad in a long time, and I've been doing this a long time. I mean, if you turn this upside down and remember where we were on March the uh, 5th and 6th of 2009, I can remember Paulson and the gang walking out of the uh, Treasury Department saying that, uh, you know, we had, they'd had TARP, um, Actually, TARP was done in October and November. We didn't make our bottom until March, and so they were still fighting, and then that's when they decided to um, free the banks up. What happened on October 5th and 6th, what the Federal Reserve did, is they changed the accounting on how the banks marked to market, and that made the whole difference in their balance sheets, and that's what gave them the ability to hang on as opposed to uh, go under. That was the real thing uh, that did that. Then later, a few years later, in 2011, uh, trying to stimulate the economy, they've been adding, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3, and uh, basically we bypassed probably a, a recession or two. I don't know if, in fact, we did, but that's pretty much, uh, you know, that's you know pretty much what, I'm, what we're looking at here. Anyway, the next uh, chart that I posted into the uh, Tiger Den today is the uh, DAX, which is the fourth largest, that's the German uh, stock market, the equivalent of our S&P. And as you can see, we're also completed all kinds of patterns up here near the 10,000 level uh, in, the, uh, in the DAX. And we've actually gone a tiny bit below the last few days' lows. So we have backed off zero in the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P. They've had no volatility to the downside at all. And maybe they never will again, and maybe it'll just go up forever. And if that's the case, just buy the dips, because that's been the thing to do for, since May, uh, actually since February 4th. So we're going to see uh, what's going to uh, see what's going to happen here, and we'll go from that level. Um, we have a lot of things happening in the commodity markets coming into, the, at least from my point of view, uh, coming into this uh, market with uh, Draghi tomorrow, uh, primarily uh, the gold market. Uh, I believe we're getting very, very, um, very, very close to what I think is going to be some really serious support uh, in the gold market uh, down around the uh, 1,200. And uh, just give me one second, and I'll post this into the room, and you'll be able to see it because we're only $20 away, 
and being this close tells us that we're most probably going to make it, uh, I would think, during the speech uh, tomorrow, which is, I believe, early in the morning our time. It's at, uh, I think it's 12.45 U.K. time, so that would be around 7.45 in the morning uh, New York time, and then they have an announcement after that, just like we do. They know how to play the games, and then they'll, they'll say something and then come back on and stuff. But Draghi is um, he's built in the same um, personality and body style as uh, Berlusconi, so I don't think there will be anything other than something really spectacular coming out of it. I don't know what they're going to do, but it will probably be spectacular. And the markets are saying, you know, with all the lack of volatility that they're ready for something you know, I don't think this will be something that might top the market. It might be the something that makes the market accelerate. I don't know. Uh, all I know is it's going to be pretty dramatic tomorrow. We'll have some wild swings. Uh, getting back to the gold market, however, uh, I'm really focusing on 12.25 per ounce in the gold. Uh, that is the um, equivalent to about uh, $18.10 per ounce in silver. Uh, that's another 80 cents lower in silver if we get uh, if we get to that level. So uh, this is pretty, uh, it's pretty important. The whole world is watching this thing, folks. So if you, uh, you know, keep in mind, I would not have, you know, if you have positions on that have big profits, you know, just hang on because, you know, this market is going to give you lots of chances to get in, both long and short. So it's nothing to be excited about. It's just that it's another announcement. And remember that these uh, financial uh, radio stations and TV shows and newspapers and everything else, they have to have these things in order to, you know, keep content and keep everybody's eyes glued on their program so they can get the sponsorship and the, uh, the money from the advertisement. That's the basic thing. That's what the function of it is. You know, that's uh, the way I look at it. I don't really look at the news very much, but I react to what the news is going to be. So, I, you know, I want to see how the markets react to what is going on tomorrow. Now, we have uh, uh, the biggest market in the world without – you know, any uh, argument from anyone is the euro versus the U.S. dollar. And uh, I wanted to uh, bring this into the uh, Tiger Den today and let, let the folks take a look at it because, boy, we have a, a whole lot of things coming in on the uh, euro down around the 135.75 uh, level. We've been down for a whole month. We topped on May the 5th. Uh, tomorrow is uh, June the 5th. And we will be looking at, uh, you know, a whole month down. Uh, we've equaled the same move down that we had between January and February that was also one month down. We've had very little rallies during this whole time. Uh, I think the three rallies that we had, that we had 170 pip rally and we had 240 pip rallies during this 20-day down move in the euro, which tells it it's extremely oversold. Now, that doesn't mean it can't accelerate to the downside. And there is some, there's a lot of people that are saying that one of the things that Draghi wants to do is to have the euro at 130. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good uh, 600 pips from where it is now. That's $6,000, and it's going to be difficult for him to get that there in a little short period of time. And frankly, the foreign currency markets, you know, the, the, the central banks can play games with it a little bit, but not too much because you're talking about thousands and thousands of times bigger than the, uh, you know, the stock markets around the world. So this is real serious money that's moving around. And I know that the central banks have a great deal of power and things that they do, but they can't control markets uh, forever. They can do it for a short period of time, but they can't control it forever. Now, we've talked about the bond markets. Uh, you know, we, we said last week that we thought we were, you know, getting up to that 138 level uh, in the Treasury bond market. You know, we said that back in, I think, February, that it had a chance to get there because, you know, we bounced off the long-term 61% retracement of that, um, that long-term bond market, and then we had that really good rally from 127 up to 138, uh, you know, 11 points, and now uh, rates have uh, started uh, to go a little bit higher. Even the 10-year, which got to uh, right around 240, uh, has moved back to the 275 level, which is, uh, you know, quite a bit for the 10-year for the note, but... Uh, We'll wait and see what happens with it. These markets will be very, very influenced by what uh, they have to say in Europe with the ECB, and uh, I think that's something that's pretty important. On, on a little personal note, I had a, one of the most uh, amazing experiences uh, a day or so ago. I couldn't get on on Monday because I had a major Internet failure, 
and there's nothing I can do about it. I was barely to get on today. I only had about two minutes to, to hook up here, but I finally got hooked up. But I had something in my hands, folks, that uh, I think you should really uh, uh, enjoy what I enjoyed anyway. A friend of mine has a 1703 Queen Anne crown. It was, it was stamped in 1703 in the U.K. when the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer there was none other than Sir Isaac Newton. And it is an incredible coin. Uh, it's about, a little over about an ounce and a half in perfect condition. There's only six of them in the world. And this coin, this coin was actually held by Isaac Newton. It was just really an incredible uh, piece of antiquity. And uh, I wish that you could all, uh, you, might, you might want to, if you get a chance, just Google 1703 Queen Anne, and you'll see uh, the picture of it. And, uh, but I actually held it in my hand. And boy, believe me, I had goosebumps. I uh, uh, I, I really uh, really got a, uh, a real a lot of joy out of it. There was another coin there uh, from 1749, but the one that had been held by Isaac Newton was the one that uh, you know really uh, really was uh, really quite amazing. Um, so it's really to see if it's going to be uh, you know if you see that. Now there's uh, yeah, well. There's a lot of different coins in the world, but believe me, that coin is in a in a, in, a, in a class of a Smithsonian. Believe me, there's only uh, six of them in the world, so I'm sure everybody knows where all other five coins are. And it's it's really uh, it's really an amazing piece of uh, artistry. I mean, you should you should have seen the the engraving and everything, and how beautiful it was. And being gold, it was just as beautiful it was as, as 1703. So uh, it's. Uh, it was really spectacular to see that. So I'm, you know, I've always liked gold, and that's why I'm watching gold quite a bit here, because uh, we're coming down to the next level of support at 1225. Remember, remember the 1170 area uh, that gave us a $200 rally in gold, and then we went up to, to the 1395, and now we're coming down. So we're going to take a break here. We got the Dow Jones. Up. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Hecht has just announced a live 90-minute webinar that he'll be hosting Saturday, June 7th from 9.30 till 11 a.m. Eastern Time entitled Energy Opportunities During the Summer of 2014. With the frigid winter having depleted some key energy stockpiles, Russian political tensions high, and the storm season for the Gulf setting up to reverberate through energy markets worldwide, opportunities could present themselves over the summer months that could provide Provide huge payoffs. When you sign up, you'll gain immediate access to a seven-page report Andy has put together as an introduction to what he'll be covering, so you can start preparing and get a feel for what Andy will be discussing live during the workshop on Saturday, June 7th. Andy will be advising his attendees of at least one trading recommendation in each area, including crude oil, natural gas, coal, and refining spreads and oil products. The best part is that this live 90-minute webinar is only $99. Don't wait. Sign up today and reserve your spot while gaining instant access access to Andy's seven-page report right now. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, some of the smart people in the uh, Tiger Den, and most of them are, I think 99.9%, .9%, and I'm the one that uh, keeps it from being 100%. The... Uh, they posted about some, uh, if you just Google the Queen Anne coin, you'll see the, the pictures uh, that are there, and it shows the 1703 coin that I was talking about, uh, and it's really, uh, really a spectacular piece. The one that I held was just absolutely perfect. So uh, it was really interesting to see that part of history. But uh, to think that uh, Isaac Newton, the man himself, you know, held that coin. I don't know if you folks know this or not, but Newton who was really in, in, uh, involved with uh, the cosmos and, and uh, you know, astronomy and stuff like that. And he believed so strongly in the Fibonacci spiral, you know, the thing called the spiral mirabilis that you see as, uh, you know, the sunflower and you see it in hurricane. Well, you see it everywhere. And, uh, but he was so enthralled with that particular formula, how the market expands from 618, 786, 1, 1 1.27, 1.618, that he had that spiral engraved on his uh, oak bed uh, headboard of his oak bed, and if you ever go to the Isaac Newton home, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see that, and it's really a spectacular uh, thing to look at when you when you use Fibonacci numbers like some of us do uh, to see that this fellow was uh, doing that uh, you know way back in those days, and uh, it was really uh, you know quite uh, quite uh, quite exciting to see that. We got a call from uh, New Jersey from Dan. Are you there, Dan? I am. Thank you. What can I do for you, my friend? Yeah, it was a fundamental question. Um, be, I, I do want to tell you I will wait for my check in the mail from Mr. Draghi. But, uh, <laughs> you took me in my heart, huh? <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, my question is uh, fundamentally on gold. Um, what would happen to the price of gold in a moderately, or you know, in a moderate deflationary scenario? Because as much money as they've pumped into the, to the uh, system over the past five years, you know, gold basically it's only up 40 percent from the lows. Actually, no, it's 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 gone from 660 to 1200, so 100 percent um, over that time period. But what would happen? You know, once the money stops flowing and, and we actually get into a deflationary scenario. Well, so in 1980, no Dan, you know, we had inflation around 12, 13 percent. You know, well, inflation was about 18 percent, and we had interest rates at 12 or 13 percent. That was uh, topped on January 20th of 1980, which was the height of the uh, inflationary era that Volcker took us out of. Uh, and from that time, it went down for... Um, I think 23 years. It finally didn't bottom, and think, I think until 2003 or 2002, at around $260. So it went from uh, 865 to, I believe, 265. So that that would be your answer. So we could easily go for the high we made at uh, you know 1930 and change a couple years ago. Uh, we could see at least uh, you know 80 percent of that, and that would take gold uh, back to probably. Uh, close to 800, you know, which was the old top around 860. You could very easily do that. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah, because I, I, I was looking, and, and a lot of people compare it to the 30s, but I didn't see how that could be relevant because the dollar was pegged to gold, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, but that was really, yeah, you're right, but, you know, and I, I'm sure it was not different this time, but they always talk about that. But, you know, gold was uh, still, a, you know, legal tender. People were actually using gold coins to, you know, buy stuff, you know, back uh, up, and, up until about 1930 or 31, and then they, they realized that uh, they were going to pull, uh, Frank Roosevelt was going to take all the coins out of um, uh, circulation, and believe me, they didn't go out of circulation. You know, my grandfather, uh, both of my grandfathers had gold coins, and he, they never turned them in. Um, and it's too late to arrest them because they long since departed. But there were a lot of people that didn't do that either because that's why there's so many of them out there in circulation to this day. They're not going to get my gold coins. They're not going to get my Smith & Wesson or my Glock or my Sig Sauer. They're not getting any of those things or my gold and silver coins. So I have to pry them out of my hand. <laughs> I, that, I, I firearms are about the, th- the, the things that are best hold the value, I, I, I really got to say. But... Um... All right, Larry. Well, listen, if the stock market ever does decide to go down, I'll call back in. And, um, and if it be- does, I'll send you $20, you know, <laughs> wait and see. I've been, I've been waiting to, to sell it. I sell it a little bit each day, and I end up either breaking even or taking a small loss. I'm still holding, you know, doing really well because I've been trading a whole lot of other things. But uh, I'm watching it. I, I put a position on in the VIX. I actually start buying that uh, on Monday at uh, 11, uh, 11.50. And uh, I'm going to risk a whole, uh, you know, a whole dollar in that. So they're going to have to push the VIX down to, uh, you know, 10.50 to get me out of that. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens to it. I know this is going to end badly. It's just a question of when. They never let the people that have all this margin debt out there uh, get by without it. And it's going to be, you know, quite, uh, quite amazing. Hey, thanks for calling in, Dan. I really thanks, appreciate it. All right. You bet. Okay, we're going to take a little break here, folks. The stock market's still up, making new highs in the S&P and the NASDAQ. We'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Lease Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. 
David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find the path of least resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, and we've got a caller from New Jersey. Bob, are you there? I am. I am, Larry. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. What can I do for you? Um, I, I was curious as to what vehicle you used to, to buy the VIX. Uh, well, I actually, what I do is I watch the index itself, which is VIX, at, uh, at 11.50 is the price I was looking at, but I buy the actual futures is what I buy. I buy the futures that I believe it's on the ICE exchange. Uh, the margin on it's around 2,800, I believe. And, um, you know, it moves pretty much the same way, except that it has so much uh, leverage that, you know, the dollar amount can, you know, be quite big. Quite big. So what you do is you, you scale down your position size so that it fits how much you want to risk. On this okay. particular um, trade, I'm looking at around $7,000 would, would be my total risk on this. Okay. Yeah, the reason I ask is there's so many of these ETFs oh. that, that <laughs> do such a poor job um, oh, of tracking that index. Yeah. I always uh, remembered uh, Warren Buffett's statement. He thought they were the weapons of mass destruction, and uh, oh. I, I, I believe that'll be the case. I mean, I just uh, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. I, I look at the price values of some of them, and I don't know how in the heck they ever come up with these values. And I'm talking I about things that are FCC really big, like TPT and TLT and stuff like that. And even with GLD, which tracks you know like 95% of what's going on with gold. There can be a huge discrepancy because it doesn't cover the overnight trading. So you've got sure. to be incredibly careful. Okay. That, that was my question. I appreciate it. And um, I, I really enjoy your show. Missed you when you were gone. Well, thank you. I missed, uh, I missed it also. But I tell you, my biggest frustration is the computer part of it. I couldn't get on Monday. I could barely get on today. I had to have all kinds of help from Hotcom just to get on. But I finally made it. But thanks for the kind words. I, I really appreciate it. I knew there was somebody out there that was listening, so keep listening. <laughs> Have a good afternoon. You bet. Thank you. You should always listen to Basil. He's, uh, I love his show. I like Steve Rhodes, uh, but, you know, Basil has the, a lot of experience that uh, takes a you know, great deal of insight into the markets, uh, which is great. I had one other story I wanted to tell you uh, because of, you know, traveling like I've been uh, doing recently to see the grandkids and stuff. The... Um, uh, one of my really good buddies when I was growing up uh, is a uh, firearms dealer. And uh, my other good friend in uh, California was uh, my pharmacist buddy when I worked for Eli Lilly, and we've kept in contact these 50 years. And his son is a um, district attorney in a town in Oregon. And uh, his, one of the attorneys that worked for him, his grandfather passed away, uh, who had been in World War II, and he had a gun collection. And uh, the gun collection consisted of um, 190 uh, World War II weapons. And uh, since, you know, Dennis knew that I was really involved with guns, they sent me the inventory of the thing, and I, I was shocked to see that the fellow had so many automatic weapons. He had the MP40s, which were the military machine pistols of, uh, you know, the Third Reich. 
and uh, he had Thompson submachine guns, M2 carbines, uh, and I don't know how he got all of that stuff out of Germany, but uh, he had uh, quite a few of them. The Thompson submachine guns uh, were worth uh, more than $25,000 each. The whole collection is going to be worth more than a million dollars because they've got some really rare pieces that haven't been seen for a very, very long time. And uh, my, the fellow who was my best man at my wedding uh, back in 1833 um, is a licensed firearm dealer for Class 3. In other words, he can do everything uh, except play more mines and large rockets and stuff like that. So all that stuff is antiquities. And so they are really, um, you know, really beautiful pieces in incredible condition. And so it looks like they're going to, uh, you know, buy the collection uh, from the family. The problem was is once they realized that that little catch of guns was worth well over a million dollars, you can imagine the squabbling that's going on in the family now, but uh, at least they have somebody that's going to take a look at it to tell them what it's worth and give them a fair price. But uh, it's really amazing to see some of these things. So I had a, an incredible coin in my hand uh, just recently, and then to see some of these guns was just, uh, you know, really blows you away because uh, you only hear about them. You know, you, um, you don't see them anymore. It's just uh, vir virtually impossible to see some of these things like German Luthers, Lugers and Walder PPKs and broom handles and things like that. They're, this really uh, brings back a lot of memories. And, of course, you know my favorite movie of all time for the war is uh, Where Eagles Dare with uh, uh, Richard Burton and uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, broadsword to Danny Boy, broadsword to Danny Boy. Come in, Danny Boy. Okay, enough fooling around. And I... I Folks, I am not drinking this morning. I can promise you that. I'm just in a very good mood today. So anyway, this is what we're uh, looking at with the markets. I posted the chart for silver. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're looking for a potential price right around $18 per ounce in silver. That would equate to pretty close to the $1,225 per ounce in the um, gold that we're looking at. And tomorrow, we're going to be really close uh, to looking at the, uh, uh, what, what these things are going to happen after Draghi makes his speech. Now, the last uh, chart that I just posted into uh, Tiger TV here is the Dow Jones uh, chart. Uh, the last time I put it in was just a day or so ago at uh, 16,717. Uh, we're a little higher than that right now. I believe we're trading around 16,730, uh, uh, yeah, so we're 13 points higher than that. And so we're really right in the ballpark of this large, uh, expanding, um, you know, triangle that we have, this one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle, which is one of Gartley's uh, most powerful patterns. It's one of the most accurate patterns, but frankly, sometimes they will fail. I mean, it's about a 15% chance that maybe this is the time, you know, when uh, we've reached Camelot again and away we go to the upside, so we'll have to wait and see if this is going to be the case or not. But we're coming in. The one thing I can promise you, though, is that I don't have anything astrologically, I mean Zippo, nothing, that I can see that tells us that we are, uh, you know, getting ready to make a top in here, other than the patterns. I don't see anything astrologically that would tell me this. Okay, we got a call from um, Brent in California. Brent, are you there? I sure am, Larry. How are you doing today? I'm really good. What can I help you with, my friend? I was just going to make mention of, I, I heard you're talking about the VIX. Uh, the other thing that can be done, it's just another potential thing to, to you know, obviously do like you're doing is I bought options on it. There are options on the VIX. Wow. Um, you can buy call options on it. So, And they're not that expensive, at least where it's at right now. So. And I just gave myself plenty of time. I bought it after September, so. Yeah, well, did you go out to 2,026? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to before it's all over, my friend. <laughs> I know. The way they're just holding this market up there, yeah, it could go on forever, I suppose. If I could just figure out who they was, I'd like to talk to them and ask them why, but we'll have to wait and see. You know, it's just, uh, you know, this, this, hey, look, when the thing was going down, you couldn't find a buyer. When things are going up, you can't find a seller. There's nothing, nothing new about this puppy, that's for sure. Yeah, not at all. I just I think it's not a bad idea to have some protection that that way. I have you know, I'm mainly cash, but I also did that in addition to just to have some protection to the downside. And it's not you know, it's kind of cheap insurance the way I look at it. But. That's exactly the way I think. I'm looking at it more of a speculative play, and I think that that's the way I want to do it as opposed to using the futures. 
because the uh, leverage is about the same, but the level of where it is makes it very, very, uh, you know, very, very interesting here in the VIX at this time. Yeah, and it seems like it's one of those things that it's really hard to try to get into. Once it'll make a big move, and it, it, you don't want to be chasing it, so you almost have to get yourself positioned a little ahead of time. And it's so low that to me, it's worth, you know, like I said, just having the cheap insurance in case it yeah. does. I, I did the same thing, 14 morning. and 12 and 11. <laughs> <laughs> I keep yeah, trying, yeah. you know, that's, that's yeah, all yeah, I do. I never give up, do. you know, that's the main thing. Sorry, you can do. Yep. Okay. Oh, you take care, Larry. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. You bet. Thanks for calling in, sure. Brent. Sure. Okay, right. uh, we've had a uh, question uh, from, uh, we've got another caller. Hey, this is a calling day. we got a call from Massachusetts. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I'm there. How are you? I'm good. What can I help you with, my friend? I'm calling about Priceline. You know, I spoke to you a couple of days ago. It worked out very well. I shorted it. Okay. And you and mean you actually I... showed a stock and it went down? Yeah, I actually shorted the stock. Well, I know I just posted it into the room. I see that it hit the 61% retracement. Uh, I think it was last uh, Wednesday or Thursday you called in, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we were, as, as we were talking, you were right on target on that. Um, and I actually took a couple of positions in it. And now I'm sitting here and saying, well, how far should I stay with it? Uh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the answer for you, my friend. But the one thing I would tell you is that, uh, you know, we've, we've only come down, uh, you know, not very much uh, from that level. It's down, you know, well over uh, 35, uh, 40 bucks. But when you're talking about a $1,200 stock, you know, there's not much you can do. Did you do it with puts, or did you do it with the stock itself? I short actually the stock itself. Okay, then I, what I would do is I would because usually three percent is the value that I would take on a stock. So three percent of a $1,200 stock is uh, 36 dollars. So from where you sold it, I would put a stop in at $36, and if it got there and you lost, I would say call up that Larry and raise heck again, but, um, you know, I would get out of it if it went more than $36 higher than where you sold it. Okay. so That way you can protect is... yourself, and if it goes up to the 786, you could look at it again. But, you know, it started to work. The good thing you've got going for you, you've got a market that goes up every day, and this stock has been down four days in a row, so it's a weaker than market stock, which could be the first uh, indication that, uh, you know, we have something, uh, you know, happening. I, it, it does seem to me like a leading indicator. On the way up, it was shooting up as leading the market, but now it seems to be leading the market down. Hmm. I, I have noticed it. Where, where do you, and I noticed that the nine day is about 1250, nine day moving average, simple moving average. The 100 day is about somewhere around 1225, where do you think I should be taking some of the profits off? What's well, I, I think my, your first profit objective would be the 382 of the whole move from May the 5th, and that would take you uh, to the level of 1218. You know, it could very easily, you know, make that level without any trouble at all. That was what I would be looking for at 1218. So, you know, that's a good uh, uh, $40 from where you are, So and plus what you have profit in. So you have a two-to-one advantage on this, so your risk is very, very small. Plus, you're, you're looking at a, you know, and it could go lower. You know, this stock, when it moves, I mean, it moved $40, dollars $60 in a day. Right. And, 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 and I'm really looking at the target about 1150 which is the 200-day uh, moving average. I can see it coming back. For <laughs> That's also the 61% retracement of the whole move from May the 8th to the high we made uh, back on the, right after the holiday on the 29th. That 61% retracement comes right into that 1150 uh, per share on Priceline. So that keep an eye on that. That'd be another one to take a look at. Okay. Watch great. watch how it gets there. If it gets to your 1218 really quickly, most probably Charlie it wants to give you more. You know what I mean? I hear you. So far, okay. we've only come down very quietly, about forty dollars in four days in an up market, which tells you there's little weakness there, but. Uh, you want to see how quickly it gets to your profit objectives, and that would give you a better idea. Frankly, with Draghi speaking and all the emotionalism that might happen tomorrow, you know, you might have, your, your hands might be tied either for the good or for the bad. We don't know. So you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I got the Draghi check, and they left it blank. They said, sign. Just oh, you just fill it out. You... Yeah, I, I yeah, forgot to tell up. everybody those are blank checks. You just have to fill them out and uh, sign the back and, you know, be on your way. 
I love your sense of humor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have it in these markets, my friend. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, thank you, you for thing. calling in, Charlie. Anyway, I certainly I appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I've got a, a request to take a look at uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's uh, Pride and Joy Facebook, of which I believe is partially owned by the uh, NSA and the FBI and the CIA, and we'll take a look at it. This market has had a pretty good run after we had made the uh, butterfly top in here, and we're actually making a sell Gartley uh, here in uh, Facebook as we speak. Whether that's going to be a major sell or not, we'll have to uh, take a look at it a little bit later, but uh, there should be a lot of resistance in this stock uh, up around $65 a share. We came down from $72 a share uh, down to 55 which happened to be uh, the 786 of the low in January and 61% of the low from uh, November. And now we're having a rally that's been going on for six weeks. And it's a little weaker than market stock because it hasn't went up and made new highs of yet. But that doesn't mean uh, that it can't, you know. That's, uh, that's something that you have to keep in mind. I have never been involved with, uh, well, this wouldn't surprise anybody, but <laughs> I've never been involved with uh, social networking or uh, any of those things uh, on the uh, uh, that they have LinkedIn and, and uh, Facebook and uh, all these other things. I, I don't do any of those things. Not because I don't want to. It's just that it's too complicated for me, and uh, I frankly uh, it scares me. And uh, when you see some of the stuff that's out there, it should scare everybody because you're opening your your soul up to the internet. And boy, the internet is a very sinister place, uh, my friends. As you all know, I, I really, I really think that they should pass laws on these hackers that really make them pay when they hurt people. You know that are really trying to make a living, and they come in and destroy their credit or whatever they're trying to do, uh, and you'll, you'll you'll make a really big uh, impact on them to keep them to, from doing that. They ought to hire some of these people to 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 work to prove some of these things or to make them safer. That's what I would do. Got to take a little break here. The stock market's still. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I wanted to end the show today with the uh, VIX uh, chart again because I think this is the key to what this market is doing. Uh, we basically have reached a market that is running at around 60% of the volume that we usually run, and we're coming. We're into June first now, or we're in Ju or first week in June. So we got June, July, and August, which is seasonally low anyway, and we're already 60% behind where we usually are, folks. Something is amiss here. Something is really wrong. They've been pumping money into this puppy for since 2011. You know, we should probably, uh, you know, think the market would be you know, even a whole lot higher than than where it is right now. I mean, you know, back. You know, if you just look at the New York Stock Exchange Index, where it was in December and where it is now, you know, it, it's up, but it's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not up a lot. Uh, the NASDAQ is matching where it was back then. Uh, the Dow Jones, I believe, is 130 points higher than what it was on December the 31st before we had the big break that went into February the 4th. So uh, just be really careful in here. It's, it's, there's a lot of things that are telling us that the, that something something big is going to happen. I don't. And who knows what it's going to be? But with the VIX where it is, I mean, historically, VIX has been a good thing to tell us when fear and greed have reached the you know the epitomes of uh, either positive or negative. And as you can see, you know, we're down into the, where there's absolutely no fear in the market at all. We have margin debt higher than we had in 1929, and now we're probably going to get some free checks from Draghi coming in here. Uh, tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. Maybe even Yellen will throw in a couple of bucks, and we'll have a, you know one big blow-off party uh, to see what happens. We've got the anniversary of D-Day coming in here uh, during the um, the next. I think it's on the sixth or the seventh, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. And we certainly want to remember everyone who uh, gave their lives, uh, you know, to conquer Europe and keep us from speaking German. A uh, very, very important uh, time in our history, so we want to remember that uh, this week. So we want to watch uh, what's happening here. As, you know, as I mentioned before, I really don't have anything astrological. We had the new moon come in on the 28th. The market did nothing, and uh, you know, we'll you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I mean, this is uh, as opposed to March of 2009, or two, you know, yeah, Mar on March 5th, we had everything there. We had a three drive pattern, 618 retracements. Uh, multiple planets coming together at the same time, and uh, we don't have any of that this time. So we'll wait and see. This is how the market topped in um, uh, 1929 uh, on September the 3rd, but that's the same thing. So we do have a full moon on June 12th, but that's uh, you know quite a ways out. You're talking about another uh, eight days. That's a little too far. Maybe we go up for another eight days. We certainly could because we've been up nine days in this run. So it's uh, very easy that it could, you know, do that, uh, you know, do that also. Just keep your powder dry and, uh, you know, watch your positions. I'd certainly use stops even though I think when uh, something does happen, it's going to hurt some people, either long or short. Well, it's already hurt the shorts 
the longs they just hang on and keep buying and buying and buying, history says that uh, someone's going to come in and, you know, uh, tell them it's not quite this easy. But whether that happens in my lifetime or not, you know, I'm not sure. I've been um, nibbling at it for a while. Uh, haven't gotten hurt, which is good. And uh, But thankfully, I've been short gold and silver and some other things uh, that have made up uh, the difference here. And that's what makes it good. We're going to have a good commodity show tomorrow. I'm trying to have a, um, a real, very famous guest on tomorrow. If I'm able to, I would certainly hope that he'll be there. But I'm not quite sure yet, so I don't want to say anything. But uh, if it is, it'll be a very interesting show. Uh, it's a household word uh, if I can get him on, and then we'll see uh, if that's the case. Someone asked me the question about, you know, Bill Foster. I had him on about a year or so ago, and, you know, he was really bearish the stock market. I haven't heard from him. I, I know that he was in uh, far outputs uh, well, over, well over a year or two, I believe. So I'm sure he's been hurt, but how badly and whether he has his positions or not, I don't know. I don't hear from him very often, maybe once or twice a year. So that's a, the only thing I can tell you uh, about that, that he was very bearish. And the fact that someone's wrong, you know, hell, I'm wrong all the time. And so you just move on to the next. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.